question about um, how does one measure the area of adaptive component panels. Um, you, do, you don't have the benefit of scheduling them the same way you do with built-in curtain panels within Revit through schedules. So you really have to build in formulas to measure the area of a panel. And the way I'm going to do that is, uh, is, is pretty simple, actually. I'm going to take a four-point panel, and that you could have more points in your panel. You just have to subdivide it differently. But the, the key to this is dividing it down into triangles. Once you've got it down into triangle, you've got a single surface, and you can use uh, Heron's formula to measure the, um, the area of that triangle. So uh, Heron's formula is based on S, which is called the, it's the semi-perimeter. You take the length of the three A, B, and C, the three edges of your triangle, divided by two, and then you build it into your formula in this manner, taking the square root. And um, what we're going to do is going to look something like this. I'll, I'll blow it up so I can go through and explain to you how the formulas work. I've got a, a curtain panel built here, and it's point one, two, three, and four adaptive points. And those are connected by, uh, I use a spline through points tool to connect those with four reference lines and, and a fifth reference line, which is a diagonal. And on each of those, and I'll show you this in Revit, for each of those guys, I came in and set the plane of that reference line in order to make a dimension that when I dimension from adaptive point to adaptive point would travel with that and not break whenever I moved it around. So in other words, if I've got something that's maybe going to warp, you see my dimensions. They kind of move around a little bit, but essentially they're, they're staying with the points because they're built onto those planes. So you, you do that, and then you create parametized dimensions. You have to make those instance parameters, because remember, an adaptive component is something that mutates. Every instance is, you know, sometimes uh, often going to be different than the one next to it. So these, these guys have to be all instance parameters. And also, Revit only allows you to do formulas when you have, uh, it doesn't allow you to blend type and instance parameters. So uh, where you start is you come in and you, you notice I've created the outside edges. I've called the, the parameters A, B, C, and D, and my diagonal is E. So that gives me two triangles. One is A, E, D, and the other one is C, E, B. So uh, the first thing I do is I create a half perimeter for each of those. So A, E, D is parentheses A plus E plus D divided by 2, and the same thing for C, E, B. And then I build it into a square root formula. So I have the AED area, which is square root, parentheses, AED, AED perimeter half times, parentheses, AED perimeter half minus A, times AED perimeter half minus E, times AED perimeter half minus D. And you do that for both of those. And then once you have the AED area and the CEB area, then you add those two together to have the area total right here. And that's it. It's pretty simple. And, uh, and I'll show you back in Revit, uh, the example I was showing was a 5 by 10 panel. This is 10 by 10, so if I open up those parameters, you can see it's saying 100 feet. And if I grab maybe these two points and move them over 5 feet, and open my box up, you'll now see that I'm getting a 50 foot area total. So, you, and then you should be able to, um, to harvest that data once these are pushed into, you know, harvest that uh, instance parameter to, once they're pushed into your model and deployed as panels. So that's it, and I hope you enjoyed the video.